stay here for Stratford Paddock. This is it. This is the big one. The FA Cup final against Manchester City. It's happening all over again. With me, as always, is Mr. Joe Smith. Joe, how yep. are you coping, bro? You're, you're all right. You look a little bit happen, anxious. Jay. You don't see this. Two teams facing each other in the FA Cup final in back-to-back -back seasons. Those two teams happen to be City rivals as well. This is unprecedented stuff. Yeah, it, I mean, it really is. And you should be looking forward to this. You should be looking forward yeah. to an FA Cup final. You should be thinking, you know what? Yes, we've got City in the final. Yes, we can really stick it to them lot. We can ram it down their faces, down their faces, down their throats even. Let's show them who is the top dog in Manchester. Yeah. But the memory of last season where it took 12 seconds for them to score, the fact that they've just won the title again, the mm -hmm. fact that we've just finished eighth, our worst ever Premier League finish, doesn't bode well <clears throat> going into this game, does it? No, there's a lot of things that don't bode well. Um, and obviously we can probably start with the manager, can't we? Because this week, all we've really seen alongside little bits about Victor Lindelof being back in training is new candidates to be the Manchester United manager. Like that's the main news around Manchester United. It hasn't been the build up to the game, it hasn't been payback for last season, Ten Hag getting two trophies in two years. It hasn't been any of that. It's been Kieran McKenna, Maurizio Pochettino. It's been Thomas Tuchel. It's been, you know, basically an endless shortlist of potential new managers for a manager that, as far as we're aware, as far as we are aware, isn't even being sacked. No, no official word has come out except we seem to be looking at loads of managers. And obviously, we talk about it because it's in the newspapers and we're going to talk about it. It'd be bizarre not to. But I do think it's a little bit disrespectful and I do think it's a, a sort of throwback to 2016 all over again where, you know, going into a game of this magnitude, literally the same game being the FA Cup final, we've got the main news of Manchester United is the manager's going to get sacked or looking like he's going to get sacked. And I feel, I feel bad for Ten Hag and I think it's a real shame that not only is his job being overshadowed at the minute and he's being sort of replaced um, behind the scenes, it seems, not only is that happening, but we're not talking about the FA Cup final, which is a big trophy. We've only won it, what, tw twice in... 25 years or something like this is a big deal for Manchester United and I think it's a real shame that that's not what the storyline has been in the week leading up to the game yeah it is it's crazy isn't it that we're in the same situation we're in what was it eight years ago eight years ago eight years ago yeah. like how we end up here where you can literally win the FA Cup final and sat the manager just after that I mean it's, it's, it is odd and I get how important the Champions League is and I get the fact that we were so bad this season in the Premier League that it's a bit difficult to sort of dismiss that. Plus, you've got Ineos coming in, you've got new ownership model, you've got these new people involved, the likes of Barada, Dan Ashworth, Jason Wilcox, or what have their say on yep. who's going to be the manager. I understand all that, but I would like Eric Ten Hag to be given more time. And I do think it is a bit stupid that a manager potentially who's going to win back to back trophies is going to lose his job. Have we had a manager win back to back trophies at United? in the last decade the last time that happened I think and forgive, forget, forgive me if I'm wrong and get involved in the chat in the comments I think it's like Fergie in 2009 I was going to say because we didn't win anything in 2012 did we? no we didn't win anything in 2010 no. when Chelsea won the double no I don't think we did so I think it is it's 08-09 yeah. those three in a row that we won <laughs> since then we haven't won back-to-back -back trophies in back-to-back -back well trophies in back-to-back -back seasons and 10 hours got a chance to do that and he might get sacked yeah it's, it's mad it's bad i think they should have made a decision beforehand and i think the decision should have been to back him yeah that's the issue but the I, fact that they haven't yeah is quite telling i think no i think you're right and it's just it's it's, it's silly to say and i've said it myself or oh, maybe they'll wait and see and it, it should be based off whether he does win this trophy and that is you know obviously a big thing but also that shouldn't be what you're basing a decision on. You can win a trophy, you can win this game by having a few decisions go your way or be, you know, have a little bit of luck. You could lose it on the flip side of that where something goes against you that shouldn't or whatever. Yeah. So to base, you know, the, the entire future of Manchester United on that does seem a little bit short sighted. Yes. Um I mean is if we win the FA Cup, do you look at it and go, it's a good season? Or is it can you ignore all the dross that's gone on this season because it has been a tough watch yeah you can't ignore it and you, you know we shouldn't ignore it and say that it was a great year and oh you know we look back on 2024 as a great time to be a United fan vintage but what will happen inevitably because it does <clears throat> is in 5, 10, 15 years time you'll look back at this spell under Ten Hag assuming we win you look back at this spell under Ten Hag you look back at these couple of years and go actually 
we won trophies in back-to-back seasons there. We got to three cup finals in two years. You know, that was actually pretty good. And obviously, that's not to say finishing eighth is good. It's terrible. It's literally the worst we've done in 30 years or whatever. So it's it's it hasn't been good. But I think with time, I can easily see, of all the managers United have had, if we were to win this game, Ten Hag being the one where more people than any other look back and go, did we do the right thing there? Yeah. Unless obviously McKenna or po- Pochettino or Tuchel or whatever comes in and wins a league within two years and then we'll go, wow, we didn't think so at the time, but that worked. But if it's more of the same for the next five, six years, then I think Ten Hag has is, is got a real claim for, you know, bloody hell, he did well there yeah. with a team that was decimated with injuries. BBC released a thing this morning, didn't they? United have, have had the most injuries of anyone in the Premier League this season, as a factually. Yeah. And, you know, you're dealing with a lot, but. It won't save the season right now. But if we were to win this game, we'll look back upon the Ten Hag era and think he actually did pretty well, I think. Yeah, I agree. I think you, you're right. Um, let's talk about Predizzi Lender. Go if he is going to win this game and save our season, yeah. what team is he going to pick? This is the team you expect to start yes. against Manchester City yeah. at Wembley. So just talk us through your team. Yeah, so we've got Onana in goal there. Back four, unchanged pretty much. Actually, Martinez didn't start, did he? But Martinez... No, he did start. Yeah, he started he's, last he's, week. He's, I, I think he's fit in match fit. Yeah, so Martinez um, stays as it is, unchanged back four. I know Varane came on the other day for 30 minutes or so. I don't know if that means he's ready to start this game. I think if he is, he will play. Um, but I, because I'm not sure, um, I'm going to go with that. Um, then a midfield three, sort of slash four. We saw last season at Old Trafford, we played Fred, Eriksen, Bruno, and I think it was Casemiro um, yeah. in that game when we beat City at Old Trafford. The last time we beat Man City, um, it was Ten Hag went for a four central midfielder system to sort of counteract their balls in the middle, their possession in the middle of the pitch. And I think he'll do the same um, tomorrow with Maynou, McTominay, Amrabat and Fernandez. Fernandez obviously then drifting wide when we have possession, when we have the ball. Uh, so he's out there for now. But I think when we're off the ball, I think Fernandez will tuck in. I think McTominay will do that kind of sort of dogged, um, trying to break up their play role. And Amrabat and Maynou uh, will sort of sit back a little bit deeper. But I think he'll try and pack out that midfield. and. I was touch and go whether to put Rashford in, but once I'd started with the foundation that we're going to play four central midfielders, yeah, you then have to drop a winger. And I think he's not going to drop Garnacho. I just right. don't see it. He plays Fair in enough. every single game. He hasn't been dropped all season pretty much. Um, so I think he will start definitely. And for me, Hoyland, um, he's had two games on the bench for a reason. He scored in both of those games as well. So I think he'll be coming into this with a bit of confidence. And uh, for me, he has to start as well. Um, again, it's so good to have the likes of Rashford, Ahmad, even Eriksen can change a game off the bench. If, uh, you know, um, what's his name, Varane's fit, I think Casemiro will probably be on the bench and he can maybe come on later in the game as well to shore things up a bit. Having a few people back is really helpful, but that's how I think it'll look. I think in particular, four central midfielders is something that Ten Hag very much likes against Man City, so I expect to see that. That makes a lot of sense. What do you reckon? Yeah, my team is is very similar, but not yeah. the same though. I've got um, I've got Varane and Martinez being the centre-back pairing. Okay. I've got Casemiro, Manu and Amrabat in, in midfield. I've got Bruno on the left, but I, I think he'll be dropping into the way we've got it set up there. But I think he'll be dropping in slightly deeper. Yeah, I've got Diallo. I think Diallo might almost play off Hoyland a little bit. He's played down a minute oh, before really? Ahmad Diallo, and he's a player as well that that can trap back and can help out. I've seen him do it a few times, and in the semi final against Coventry, I know Coventry a completely different team to Manchester City. He was a midfielder when he came on. You think he had sort of two yeah. minutes as a as a winger, and then he had to drop back into midfield so he can help out. Um, with the defensive side of things as well because I do feel it's going to be a bit back to the wall so you don't think Garnacho or Rashford will start then? I don't think they will and I'll tell you why I think if you've got both of those on your bench I think you've got options That's like big point. options yeah. and I think that Garnacho, whilst you're right Ten Hag has preferred him this season he's played a lot of minutes I think he has dropped off a little bit yeah. lately and I just wonder whether the, the games are catching up with him and I think him yeah. off the bench is one of the best substitutes we've had Post Fergie, he comes off the bench, he absolutely terrorises teams. He did it against Manchester City last season, if you remember, at Old Trafford. He came on, and in that 20 minutes, he absolutely destroyed them. Mm. And at, at the, the final as well, in the FA Cup final, he came on and he was the, the one player you felt could get 
something from the game for us. Yeah. Marcus Rashford, I know it's almost unheard of to, to drop Marcus or to have him on the bench. He's not played a lot of football recently. He yeah. hasn't. And I think that might be the deciding factor for him. And I think if you're sort of Manchester City and you, you know, it's nil nil or even if, you know, one nil down or whatever, you know, one nil down, sorry. Rashford and Ganacho, come on, that's a massive boost. That that's yeah. like, I'm gonna minute. You need a bit of firepower. Off you the need bench, something, definitely. yeah. And I think Diallo is good enough to start. And I also think, obviously, Bruno Fernandez yeah. is. Because, like as well. you said, if we're two 0 down in the seventieth minute, yeah, and you've got Rashford, Garnacho, and 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 Ahmad all on the pitch already, yeah. What do you do to bring? What you what to, you to do bring bringing on a bit of fear? No disrespect to the kid, but Tony Marshall, yeah, who's not played for about six months. Yeah, like, you need that's not going to do it. Christian Eriksen. That's not going to turn, turn things around, is it? No. Where if you go, you know, it's close or we're in it or we're chasing a game, yeah, it is two of our best wingers and two yeah. wingers that are capable of doing something, both with a little bit of a point to prove for different reasons, then you might have uh, decent options there. Let uh, me know in the chat in the comments whether you agree. This is what I think is going to happen, not yeah. what I'm saying should happen. Same for Joe as well. These are our predicted teams. Talk about the opposition. I don't want to dwell on them too much we know all about Manchester City they're yeah. facing 115 charges there's serious allegations against them that they have been cheating for over a decade so mm -hmm. everything is a little bit tainted in what they do they have won quite a few trophies but again many of them have got an asterisk next to them because until these cases are settled we'll never know whether they've cheated or not or whether they've won them fairly and squarely with all that being said what's your score prediction mm -hmm. good point um, couldn't have said that better myself by the way yeah thank you I've got a vision. Yes. And it's been replaying in my mind over oh, and over okay. again for the last few days when I've been walking to work, when I've been getting in bed. Those idle moments when you're sort of brushing your teeth and you're just looking off at the tiles and the bathroom wall and thoughts flood into your mind. Do you uh, know yeah, what I mean? Thoughts about me? No. I, I thought it was just me that had them out. Oh, all right. Sorry, ignore it. So. 1-1, one, one, extra time. Yeah. Marcus Rashford scores the winner in extra oh time. Oh my God. We win 2-1 after extra time. That is that is a vision I, I, I keep replaying in my head and I don't know why, and it's rare that I have these things, but I think we will take that game into extra time. Marcus Rashford, the substitute, yeah. comes onto the pitch and scores the winner for Manchester United. Can Can Southgate explodes yeah. into a into a, basically a combination of butterflies, fire, yeah. and just hot grease. Yeah, it's just it's just a big piss wet through waistcoat on the floor of Wembley because he's that. made a big mistake. He's made a big error. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And Two Marcus one after extra it. time. Marcus Rashford scored the winner. Okay, what love that. Absolutely love it. Um, I haven't been having visions. I have Marcus That's good. So the pills are working. Yeah, they have, the, the, the tablets have kicked in. That's really good. I'm happy for that. First time in years, to be honest good. with you. The voices have quieted down as well. Have they? Yeah. Well, turns out it was just podcast there, wasn't it? Uh, was playing through Alexa. I've got voice in my head. No, that's literally just a podcast that I've got on. Yes. It's BBC Sounds. Some kids in my house that never shut up. That's the one. Um, but I think we can win this. Oh. And I think we will win this. Fucking hell. Just a reminder, yeah. Jay, I don't think you've predicted United to win a game on like four of the last five previews. Yes. Yeah. And I've been wrong. I should have predicted us to win two of those at least. Uh, I point. think we'll win this and I think we'll win it comfortably. Fuck off! <laughs> Shit, what are you? What are you? Com what do you mean comfortably? What's, what's going to be comfortable about it? I think... All right, they might nick a goal. 3-1 United. <laughs> uh, do you know what I mean? Like... We'll get an early goal. Yeah. We'll do to them what they did to Not us. Not 20 seconds. No. Right, maybe a minute. Early goal. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Varane with an adder. Yeah. There you go. 1-0 up. They're out attacking. We counter attack him. Diallo gets a second. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all happening. Bit of back and forth. Oh, no, what's going on? Then Marcus comes off the bench, gets the third. With two minutes to go, it's all over, and they get a consolation goal in the death. God. That's how it's going to pan out. That's my <laughs> prediction. Anyway, we want to hear your score predictions, though. Enough of mine and Joseph's. Film yourself in landscapes for 30 seconds or more. It's up to you. Around 30 seconds. I'll try and keep it short and sweet. Give you your score prediction um, and send it to paddockmatchday at gmail.com. And we'll use that as part of our FA Cup final pre-match build-up on the watch-along. So make sure you send it in, man. Get involved 
in the channel. This is your channel, and we want to hear what you guys think and what you think the score will be. And obviously, you've got a lot more noise than me, Joe. So you'll probably be right. Um, Joe, always a pleasure, my friend. Good luck, Jay. See you at Wembley, innit? Good luck. See you at Wembley. There. We're going to be down at Wembley, but we're going to have a watch along. You're going to have Ronaldo, you're going to have watch along. Andy Tate, you've got Ryan Hopper, you've got along. Kofi B. Also, you'll get reactions from Alison, McCola, me, and him. We'll be giving you our reactions from Wembley. So don't miss, don't worry, you're not going to miss out. Just make sure you are hitting like <laughs> and subscribe, scared, subscribe to the Jay. channel. He's scared, I'm not. We got this. See you in a day. Thanks for watching.